Here's a fact most fans miss. In Marvel's comics, Wolverine's adamantium skeleton is described as weighing around 100 pounds more than a normal bone. Your joints would struggle under the load, your heart would work harder to circulate blood, and even simple movement would come at a steep physical cost. Without a healing factor constantly repairing the damage, this so-called upgrade looks more like a built-in self-destruction plan. In this video, we'll explore Weapon X, the varieties of adamantium, and the very real science of what would happen if a person actually tried it. So what happens when you try to make the human body unbreakable with an indestructible metal? The idea of a metal that never breaks has fascinated readers since its first appearance in Marvel Comics. This is the myth of adamantium, the so-called indestructible alloy that defines Wolverine's claws and skeleton. In the comics, it's not just hard, it's presented as the ultimate benchmark of strength. It slices through barriers that real metals could never dent and resist impacts that would obliterate ordinary steel. The appeal is obvious. If the weakest part of being human is how easily our bones snap, then adamantium feels like the perfect solution. But the moment you look closer, that illusion starts to fracture. Adamantium's roots go back to the 1960s, when Marvel introduced it during Dr. Myron McLean's experiments in World War II. Those experiments accidentally produced a unique alloy, later called proto-adamantium, which forms Captain America's shield. That shield embodies the idea of absolute defense, no matter the attack. Decades later, Wolverine inherited the same mythology when Weapon X bonded true adamantium to his skeleton. His claws don't just cut, they cut perfectly, again and again, without dulling. These moments define adamantium not as an ordinary material, but as a storytelling shorthand for invulnerability. In Marvel lore, there isn't just one adamantium. True adamantium is nearly indestructible and is what people usually mean when they discuss the alloy in Wolverine or Captain America's shield. Then there's secondary adamantium, more affordable and easier to reproduce, but not flawless. Stronger heroes like Thor can break it under extreme exertion. Finally, Adamantium Beta is unique to Wolverine. His healing factor altered the metal's properties so his bone marrow could still function, keeping him alive despite the invasive bonding. Even these variations highlight a core truth. Adamantium behaves however the story needs. Its limits shift across comics, making it less a science experiment and more a tool for narrative flexibility. What gives the illusion of realism is the way fans compare adamantium to real-world substances. In discussions of physics, comics, and even some scientists point to osmium, the densest naturally known metal, as a close analog. But reality still falls far short. Osmium is brittle, difficult to work with, and far too heavy to implant inside the body. Designing something both harder than diamond and light enough for a skeleton is not just unlikely, it's impossible with current knowledge. This makes adamantium's legend even sharper. The more we know about material science, the clearer it becomes that it couldn't exist outside of fiction. Ultimately, adamantium is not consistent science, but a narrative device. At times, it is flawless and unbreakable. At others, writers show cracks in its perfection to create drama or tension. Its nature bends to serve the needs of the story, whether that means standing as a symbol of indestructibility or suddenly becoming vulnerable to extraordinary force. This dual quality, both infinite strength and convenient weakness, explains its endurance as a myth. It stands as a reminder that invulnerability makes for gripping images, but poor science. And that myth sets the stage for another question. If adamantium itself reads like an impossible dream, what does it actually mean for a human being to have it inside their body? The answer comes not in the theory, but in the brutal details of how Wolverine received his metal skeleton. Weapon X was where Wolverine's life was dismantled and rebuilt into something almost unrecognizable. This was not a voluntary upgrade or a sleek experiment in super soldier design. It was a clandestine program in Canada that captured Logan under Romulus's manipulation and subjected him to brutality disguised as science. Under the direction of Professor Thornton, with Dr. Abraham Cornelius and Carol Hines carrying out the day-to-day -day procedures, Weapon X forced him into a process so invasive that survival without his mutation would have been impossible. The procedure was less like surgery and more like prolonged torture, paired with brainwashing that left him feral and unstable, a manufactured living weapon. The core of the procedure broke down into three critical stages. First, 
Logan's body was restrained as molten adamantium was slowly grafted onto every bone in his skeleton, a process Douglas Cornelius oversaw with the precision of an engineer weaponizing flesh. Second, his healing factor became the fulcrum of the entire experiment, repairing nerve and tissue damage in real time so that he could live through what should have been instant death. Third, as the metal fused inside him, it formed adamantium beta, a variant unique to Wolverine that allowed his bone marrow to continue producing blood cells. Without this adaptation, the metal would have shut down his most basic life functions, ending the program in failure as quickly as it began. The claws made this ordeal even worse. Before Weapon X, Wolverine's claws were natural bone extensions that erupted through his knuckles. But in the lab, each one was coated with adamantium and tested repeatedly. Imagine the claws being forced out of his hand over and over, not for combat, but so his captors could see if the bond held. The cycle was endless. Draw the claws, tear through flesh, let the healing factor stitch the wound shut, then repeat the process again. This was an enhancement. It was ritualized torment designed to enforce obedience while weaponizing pain. His iconic blades, often seen as his greatest strength, were forged in one of the cruelest ways possible. And while the aloe gave him unbreakable bones, the cost to his physiology was permanent. Adamantium constantly leaked trace particles into his bloodstream, meaning Wolverine's healing powers fought a quiet battle against poisoning every second of his life. For him to simply exist, his body had to neutralize toxins at a pace that would overwhelm any human. When that regeneration falters, scientists like Beast have had to step in with treatments to keep the poisoning from consuming him. What fan discussions often present as invulnerability is, biologically, a continuous war inside his body, where the victory is survival itself. The comics show just how fragile that balance is. In the famous Fatal Attraction storyline, Magneto violently ripped the adamantium from Wolverine's skeleton. The event nearly killed him, as his healing factor was pushed far past its limits and was left struggling to recover. That moment revealed the raw truth. The metal both defined Wolverine as a weapon and constantly threatened to destroy him from within. The very substance that made him indestructible was also the greatest danger to his survival. So while Weapon X succeeded in creating a soldier wrapped in a legend, the reality was much darker. Logan gained claws of an unbreakable alloy and bones that could withstand almost any impact, but at the cost of relentless trauma, lifelong toxicity, and a dependence on powers that cannot fail for even a moment. His story is not one of pure strength. It's a tightrope act where the price of falling is fatal. And this leaves us with an uncomfortable question. Beyond torture and brainwashing, what would all that extra metal actually do to a human body? The science of a metal skeleton begins with a simple, unavoidable reality, weight. A normal skeleton makes up only a fraction of your total body mass, light enough to support you without slowing every movement. If those bones were suddenly replaced with something as dense as adamantium, a metal often compared in comics to osmium, the densest known substance, the result would be catastrophic. Even the densest real metals are orders of magnitude heavier than bone. So a human built around that weight would carry the equivalent of a second body inside. Every step, every lift, even standing upright, would feel like you're dragging around a hidden passenger you can never set down. The first points of failure would be the knees and spine. Knees are designed to absorb shock and distribute force between bone and soft tissue, but piling an extra 100 pounds onto them with every step would tear through cartilage in days. Ligaments would stretch under the constant pressure and eventually rupture in the spine. Vertebral discs act like cushions, preventing bone from grinding against bone while you bend and twist. With a metal skeleton, those discs would collapse, nerves would pinch, and pain would lock you into immobility long before you could take advantage of unbreakable bones. Instead of enhancing durability, the skeleton would anchor you into a state of chronic injury. Your cardiovascular system would strain under this new load as well. The heart is sized to keep blood moving through a body of its natural weight. Add 100 pounds of internal mass, and suddenly the pump must work against far greater resistance. Blood pressure would spike while vessels compress under the heavier frame, forcing the heart into overdrive. That kind of stress can't last. It would push the body toward failure, with the circulatory system wearing out fast in the effort to keep up. The lungs would struggle just as much. Muscles rely on oxygen to function, and when every single movement demands the energy of lifting dozens of extra pounds, your oxygen needs climb instantly. Breathing alone wouldn't keep pace. You'd be winded walking across a room. Running would be unrealistic. And combat maneuvers, the kind Wolverine pulls off effortlessly, 
would be out of the question. Instead of turning you into a super soldier, a metal skeleton traps you in a cycle of exhaustion where basic tasks feel like marathons. Another major problem is flexibility. Real bone bends slightly under stress, a property that protects you from injury by absorbing and dispersing force. Adamantium, by contrast, impacts that should spread harmlessly through your skeleton would travel directly into ligaments and muscles, shredding tissue around bones that refuse to give an inch. A fall that once ended in a bruise could now rupture joints or tear tendons because there's no longer a buffer between hard impact and fragile flesh. You wouldn't break bones, but you'd still be crippled. The immune system adds yet another layer of conflict. The body isn't designed to live with solid metal locked inside it. Every cell would recognize adamantium as a foreign object and respond as if it were an infection. Chronic inflammation would spread, tissues would swell, and the immune system would burn itself out fighting a material it could never eliminate. That constant internal war would escalate organ damage and make survival even shorter. In Marvel's stories, all of these problems are solved by Wolverine's healing factor. His body not only compensates for the metal's mass and strain, but actively repairs the damage it causes every moment of his life. Without that fictional mechanism, a metal skeleton provides no combat edge and no durability increase, only relentless breakdown from the inside out. But the damage isn't just mechanical. Even if muscles, joints, and circulation didn't fail, another threat would remain hidden in the bloodstream, quietly working against you from the moment the procedure began. The greater danger comes from inside, metal poisoning. This is the hidden cost of Wolverine's adamantium, the metal that Marvel lore repeatedly presents as his most persistent enemy. Adamantium never integrates with living tissue. It remains foreign, and in the stories, it continually sheds microscopic fragments into his bloodstream. On the outside, his skeleton appears flawless, smooth, and unbreakable. On the inside, Marvel shows that those trace amounts begin a slow but relentless war that his body can't truly stop. His healing factor becomes less about repairing battle wounds and more about performing constant invisible maintenance to starve off chemical collapse. Comics make this point clear through repetition. In X-Men number 99, when mutant powers were suppressed, Wolverine's natural defense failed, and adamantium poisoning took hold in its advanced stages. His body cracked under the burden almost instantly, an explicit reminder that without regeneration, the alloy would kill him. The stories portray this not as an exaggeration, but as the natural baseline. The skeleton is always working against him, never for him, and the margin between survival and death exists only because of his mutation. Even when stable, Marvel characters like Beast have had to step in with temporary drug therapies to slow the poisoning's effects, keeping Wolverine alive when even his healing starts to lag. These treatments never last. They are narrative stopgaps, reinforcing that no cure exists and that his survival itself is precarious. The mirror in our world is direct. Real heavy metals are notorious for the same kind of systemic impact. In medicine science, heavy metals don't need to be ingested in chunks. They become lethal even in trace amounts. Chronic exposure to substances such as these overwhelms the kidneys and liver, degrades the nervous system, and spreads toxicity in every direction. It's the accumulation over time that devastates, a slow corrosion written through flesh instead of machinery. Readers can see the immediate parallel. A skeleton that leaches toxic particles would turn the bloodstream into a delivery system for its own destruction. If that happened in a real body, the sequence of collapse is brutal and predictable. The kidneys, overworked by constant filtering, would be scarred and begin to fail. The liver, designed as a chemical processor, would swell with damage until its function broke down entirely. The nervous system, sensitive to even tiny disruptions, would misfire. Coordination breaking apart, tremors appearing, senses dulling. Muscles would weaken as if dissolving from within. In the death of Wolverine storyline, a virus shuts off his healing factor. Without regeneration, the adamantium bonding became the death sentence it always was. The poisoning did not creep, it consumed him, showing readers that beneath the myth of indestructibility lives a constant fatal truth. His skeleton is not a gift of power, it is a curse held at bay only by mutation. Remove that one factor, and the indestructible metal devours him from the inside. And if Wolverine can barely survive with a mutation working endlessly to patch the damage, what chance would a normal body have? A skeleton of metal wouldn't make you stronger. It would turn you into a chemical weapon against yourself, infecting your organs in silence until collapse. This is why the character's biology is framed as an exception, not a model to replicate. And that truth raises the final question. If Wolverine only lives on borrowed time, 
What does his adamantium skeleton really represent? In comics, adamantium combined with Wolverine's healing factor creates a living weapon, an image of absolute resilience. In reality, the same modification would likely crush joints, overwhelm organs, and poison the body from within. What looks like indestructibility on the page becomes collapse in practice. That contrast is the core of this myth versus reality. Extreme upgrades don't guarantee strength. They highlight how fragile the human body really is under unnatural weight. If you like this myth versus reality, hit like and subscribe and tell us in the comments which fictional upgrade we should test next. Would you accept metal bones if you could guarantee a healing factor?